even better than last time. <laughs> Surely that's not stuck through, is it? We have it. We've got two cracking matches: Stalin Laguna and ADT. Then Kaya FC Iloilo take on the newcomers in Dynamic Herb Cebu FC. We've got a chance here, bouncing around, and it's poked in by Abu C. Ooh, and here we go again. Gayoso finds the far corner to make it eight. Oh, ball in, and there's the opener. Gaia FC draw first blood. Shift in midfield. Reyes now finds a ninth, and he deserves a goal, Darren. The semi-finals of the Copa Paulino Alcantara continue and we're bringing you the Fast and Furious action live at the PFF National Football Center in Carmona, Cavite. Conditions are perfect for the matchup that we have on our hands. One already decided uh, of the semi-finals, so we've got a confirmation that we will have at the ASCALS development team in the final. The question is, who joins them in the final? Will it be Kaya FC Iloilo or will it be Dynamic Herb Cebu FC? We will find out in just a few moments. It's a battle between the clubs from the Visayas and we have the pleasure of calling this match and bringing it to you. Jing Hamlang and Darren Hartman, um, what a game we have on our hands here, Darren. Well, I've only just uh, managed to settle down from the last game. And of course, we can see that that was contested between Stallions and, of course, Ascal's development team coming out on top. But now we have the Group B leaders, Kaya FC, going up against, of course, it's going to be Cebu. It's going to be a really, really good game. So much to play for, Jing. I'm very, very excited. Of course, on one hand, you have a continentally experienced club that has been a former winner of this competition. Going up now, a fresh upstart playing in their first professional competition in Cebu. It's uh, the, a fantastic opportunity for the new side to get a big, big scalp and to make their announcement onto the stage of Philippine football. Now, let's take a look at their opponents for today. Kaya FC Luilo, just a few months away from their first foray into the Champions League, and they carry that over into the group stage in impressive fashion, Darren. Well, Kaya have always been a good side. And I think with that stint that they had in the Champions League, they've just come back so professional, so focused on achieving what they want to achieve in this cup. And yeah, they had a tough game against ADT. ADT made them work for their goals, but there were two good team goals that they managed to produce. And of course, we saw them bang in six against Minjola. And that is not a bad way to go into this matchup. So far, eight goals scored, none conceded. And of the three 
that were scored in uh, last match. There were uh, three assists for Daiso Horikoshi, who also found himself on the score sheet. The Japanese midfielder really coming alive now for coach Yu Hoshide. And this might be the competition that he makes his announcement uh, or his arrival to uh, the rest of the Philippine football community. Yeah, he's been excellent. And of course, he's being supported by this cast here. Uh, the Kaya coaching staff going with Michael Casas in goal. For me, that's not too much of a surprise considering the amount of experience that he brings, but, but not too many changes really. I mean, they're playing great football. They don't need to make changes, Jim. The personnel, the same. Fuji, however, finding himself over on the rightmost side with Horikoshi starting in a little bit further up the field. And you look at the substitutes for Coach Yu Hoshide. He's got quite a bit of firepower there if he needs to switch things up along the way of course in this semi-final matchup 90 minutes if that is not decided within regulation we go into extra time and possibly even the penalties as well meanwhile Cebu uh, playing in their first competition as mentioned they went up against Stallion in group A and they battled it out pretty closely in that match Stallion only scraping by by a solitary goal Darren well, it was one of those games for those who watched it where Cebu, they did show some nerves. They showed some adjustment into this sort of level of football. But as the game went on, they got better and better and better, uh, not just in terms of the way that they were playing, but also in terms of establishing the sort of football they'll be playing. So we had a just a small glimpse of what they can do. And I'm sure they will be very well prepared mentally for this game against a tough Kaya side. Of course, when you look at Cebu, they are a brand new team but the players that comprise this team are actually quite a few veterans and Ricky Sendra amongst the players that we're looking at as key if they are to find success here in the semi-final and I think Ricky Sendra is key not just what he does on the ball but really the leadership that he brings off the ball he's constantly talking he's checking likes talking with the referee as well but I mean in terms of what he brings in for ex wealth of experience and really putting his body on line for the team. That's exactly what Cebu are going to need today. Let's take a look now at the starting 11 for head coach Oliver Colina. A few changes here, Darren. Well, I think he's studied the game. I can see by the players that he's included in the squad and the players who have just missed out. But I do like the back four uh, with Kanyas there playing alongside Jason Cordova. They're going to be difficult and will pose some sort of uh, presence uh, against this Kaya side. And in the middle, of course, you had Daniel Guardia, who was, for me, one of the best players in the last game for them as well. So one of the Tassis making way for Nicolas Ferrer on the right side. Rosquillo also checks in for Dabao. So a couple of changes for Coach Bing Bing Colina. Will it be the difference here against this Kaya FC Iluilo side who are looking to make it three final appearances in the Copa Paulina Alcantara. They won the first one in 2018, lost out to Ceres Negros in the second edition of the competition in 2019 and now here they are battling for a place in the final two. So here they come, making their way onto the pitch here. This match going to be refereed by Mick John Pineda alongside Merlo Albano, Francisco Himpesao, and Ronnie Rodi Leble as the fourth official. Taking a look here at the squad of Kaya FC Iluilo. Lots of experience here on the pitch. Masa Nari Omura, of course, in his 11th season for Kaya. You saw Simone Rota and Carlisle Mitchell there at the back. That poise and experience, something that they rely on a huge deal as we take a look at Cebu. And there's going to be plenty of excitement on this side. The boys wearing red. Imagine coming into your first competition and being able to slay the unofficial favorites en route to the final. It would be a fantastic story for Cebu. Well, Cebu are waiting for that story, really. They're waiting for their first goal when it's your debut season at any level. You just want to leave a mark. And of course, Cebu will be flying the flag for provincial football. They've got some great players selected from UAAP, NCAA, and it just really gives an option for those homegrown talents to show themselves against 
this Kaya side, which have gone on and represented the Philippines at the top, top level of club football. As I said, the stage is set. We saw an electrifying semi-final just a couple of hours ago, and I'm sure that these two sides will not let us down. In the earlier match, if you missed it, spoiler alert, but the Ascos development team are through to the final. Stallion, on paper, you would say would be the most experienced side or one of the more experienced sides in the country. Uh, been in the professional game for almost a decade now. So, you, you know, on paper, you'd think the Ascals development team were the underdogs heading into that one. But match is not won on paper, Darren. They're won on the pitch and they needed 120 minutes to decide that one. But ultimately, the young guns of the Ascals able to prove themselves worthy of a spot in the final. Yeah, and I think uh, ADT and Kaya play a similar style of football, similar formation after the tactical adjustments that ADT made. They like to pass the ball. They do like to rotate and try to manipulate space. And just looking at Cebu when they set up, they're very compact in the middle. They've got that flat back four and then two players just sitting in front, keeping it nice and tight. So two contrasting styles and let's see what style wins today. Moments away from kickoff now. Here we go. Kickoff at the PFF National Football Center. Kaya FC Iluilo in yellow taking on Cebu in red. So glad you could join us. If you're watching on television or live streaming the match wherever you may be, so glad you could be with us for this contest. This is expected to be an exciting football match here on this Tuesday night. Cebu able to clear their lines here and they're launching it forward. Masanari Omura. Amita stepping on the brakes but running into some trouble. And the battle in midfield <laughs> expected to be a physical one and it's our first foul. Didn't even reach the one minute point. Yeah, I think. This won't just be a competition of tactics. It won't be about physicality. It's also going to be about mindset and mentality. Uh, Cebu are willing to dig deep. They're willing to go the extra, especially in their press. And it's whether or not Kaya can stay cool, calm and collected like they have done from the start of this competition. If, if I'm Kaya, I'm just keeping it simple at the start of the game, moving the ball, just trying to show that you can play to a good tempo and then just really make sure that they're in control of you know the tempo of the game and making sure that they're the ones who are pulling the space and making the scenarios that they want they don't want to fall into a really catty sort of game with Cebu because my money then would be on Cebu winning that straight pass there from Odi Menzi putting unwanted pressure on this back line early on Perhaps a few early nerves here from both sides. Miyagi able to get the ball into the danger zone. Half cleared here by Kaya. Ball into the box and that's gonna sail over the bar of Mike Casas. Good early sign here for Cebu. Omura over to Arnella Mita. Shiro Daniels able to navigate the pressure. Rota going long. It's a good touch from Horikoshi. He's up against two here. And Saldivar wins that battle. That's going to be an interesting one. Saldivar and Horikoshi. There's a, a few interesting battles that will be out there. Uh, one that we saw in the middle with Kenshiro Daniels there as well. Gardia is a... We didn't see him. He was holding back in the last game. Very professional, just good timing. But of course, with Armita there, and uh, I'm sure that Gardia and Armita have been up against each other a few times. It's going to be really interesting to see which of the centre midfields really settle first into this game. 
For those who are familiar with the college game, these are some familiar matchups that you are seeing. There have been some fiery affairs between UP and FEU in the past. Good work here from Cebu early on. Sendra, we're going to switch the play, and he does so. Rosquillo venturing forward. He's got support. Ferrer, able to cut inside the Broker. Finding some joy here on the right side so far. Cebu. Threatening to go along with their throw in. It is Miyagi. Has it poked away by Amita. Break is on here for Daniels, who's tugged back by Daniel Gadia. It's going to be an early word from Mick John Pineda. Already a warning from the referee. So Daniel Gadia walking the tightrope already. Omura pings that into Daiso. A little too physical from Saldivar. And this is an aspect of the game that we are expecting. And of course, Kai just can't get frustrated. I mean, I could see it as a sign of respect sometimes when you're forcing the other team to play this way, to really press you quickly, to try to stop you from building any sort of momentum. Sabu won't be unhappy with their first five minutes in their first semi-final. There's still a lot to play. First free kick here for Daiso. Mick John Pineda needing a moment to discuss things. A little too much physicality going on at the edge of the box. And here comes Daiso's delivery. It's a good one. Headed away. Going to be out for a throw in. Ace Villanueva in goal is going to be particularly familiar with the folks at Kaya FC Lirilo. Played his football there for several years alongside Papu Korsami, of course, who he's teammates with now in Cebu. Head coach Bing Bing Kulina actually also coached Kaya at one point. There's quite a few connections between these two sides. There's Nicholas Ferrer from FEU. Playing against his former teammates here. It actually came off a Kaya player last, so it's Cebu who are going to be taking this throw in. Rather a goal kick. <laughs> Daniels looking for Joven Bedik. Unable to get a touch on that ball. That's nice and tidy from the opposite captain. Broiker had it poked away. Ferrer looking for the run of Miyagi. Return ball was cut out. Neither side able to settle just yet. Yeah, Sabu are doing a good job at the moment. They're just squeezing space nice and quick. And now Kyle will be able to just settle, put some passes in, just swing the ball a couple of times, make sure everyone's getting their touches on. And of course, just try to take a little bit out of Cebu, who started very, very positively so far this game. Of course, you've had a chance to call all the matches, Darren. It seemed as if Kaya breezed through the group stages. What is it that they do so well? Well, exactly this. They're, they're very comfortable in rotating the ball and they pick their moments going forwards. Um, but with Jason Cordova and Waco Cañas at the back, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, uh, especially if they can communicate well with the players just in front of them. Uh, so every time that Kaya play long, that means that Sabu's defensive setup is working. Like in that example there against Binjola, Kaya weren't doing that. They were able to just keep 
picking passes and, and working the ball forwards. However, if it was to start going end to end, I think Kaya would be the favourites to create an overload first and make something from it. Sendra getting entangled with Omura. Kaya play quickly. Rio able to get back on the outside of Tassi. Daniels unable to get the cross into the box. And now it's Mitchell under pressure. Casas calmly over to Rota. And Kaya now able to build. Second time, Nano has run into trouble there in the middle of the pitch for Kaya. Tassi looking for a cross. It's a good one. That's headed out of danger by De Broeker. And as you said, that's the second time that Amit has been caught on the ball in the middle. He's not being given a lot of space, but take nothing away from the delivery here. That's a fantastic swung ball to the far post. De Broeker was the first to react. But Kaya still have to deal now with this corner. Set pieces might be a key here for Cebu. Delivery is good from Ferrer. Casas came out to collect. Defense doing its job. And the outlet is Amita. It's under pressure from Gadia. Ferrer, good feet from the right winger. Ball into the box. Unable to match the initial work to create the space. That's one of the only problems with playing with the three at the back. If you know how to, you can get the ball in between the, the wing backs and the centre backs. And just a couple of times that we have been able to get the ball into that space. Daniels. Getting engaged there. Gradia. Looking for the pass to Miyagi. Ran into the wall, that is Carlisle Mitchell. But Cebu spending a lot of time inside Kaya's half here. Yeah, they're spending a, yeah, you're right. They're spending a lot of time in Kaya's half, and then as soon as they lose possession, they're just dropping deep. And they're just waiting for every time Kaya plays a little pass into the middle, and then they're pressing very, very hard, making sure that the centre mids of Kaya cannot turn and face their goal. Vidic, able to turn and find Daniels. Loses the ball there. Ricky Sandra taking over. Saldivar. Amita winning that header. And oof. Quite a collision there between Horikoshi and Saldivar. Cebu holding their own here early on. Yeah, what Kaya needs to be doing now is just settle down a little bit. I mean, it's being very contested in the middle. So, you know, just rotate the ball be a little bit, a little bit more patient and then just punch it into your centre mid to tell them one touch, just punch it straight back into your rotation and then just slowly build yourself into the game because every time Kishiro Daniels or Amita's taken more than two touches, there's always a Sabu player there. It's almost like deja vu here for Kaya. When you think back to the ADT game, it took him about 20 minutes to settle into the match. As at the moment, fluidity seemingly hard to come by for the men in yellow. Menzi. Room for Rota to venture forward. Gets that to Bedik. Not on the same wavelength as Daiso. Now Baris Tassi. He's got room to work with. This time, 
Ball into the box. Not going to trouble De Broeker. Carlisle Mitchell. Linchpin for the three at the back of Kaya. This is what Kaya want. Just to inch their way forward. Needing very little pressure until the halfway point. Cebu now staying compact. Kaya looking to break them open here. Horikoshi. Ball into the box, headed away by Cordova. First real threat for the center backs to deal with. Yes, and that time Kaya being more patient on the ball, just waiting for their moment. Still forced to play that long diagonal pass, but they've managed to maintain possession high up the field here. Amita, that's chested down by Gadia. He's happy to launch that forward. And Menzi, another mistake. Straight to his former teammate, Corsame. Gadia. Looking to thread that ball. Casas alert to the danger. A third of this opening period already in the books. The longer it stays nil-nil, the happier Cebu will be. As we take a look at the possession statistics, 65 to 35, almost twice as much possession for Kaya, but they haven't been utilizing it in a manner that has created much danger for Cebu. Yeah, and you can see that Cebu just dropped their line so quickly, forcing Kaya to play longer pass. That's a good pass. That's a very late challenge there from Waco Cañas. Masanari Omura clearly feeling the effects of that. Waco Cañas very apologetic. But the yellow card already out from the referee. So it's going to be the first booking of the game. And Omura needing a moment to recover. Be interesting to see the contact there. Because the ball was had certainly left already. Seemed to be some follow through from Waco there. And it's in that space right underneath the shin guard. One more look at it here. It definitely caught the Japanese midfielder. Masa able to shake it off. So Wako needing to be careful here. He's got over 70 minutes in regulation to avoid another yellow card and a sending off. Yeah, it's not an easy position to be in, Jing, as a centre back, especially when you're against a side like Kaya that can, you know, create something out of nothing. Ball to the box for Ace to collect. He's equal to the challenge. <laughs> Ferrer. Miyagi has drifted out wide. He's trying to get it to the run of Gadia. Ruski 
Kilio looking for Gadia. Enough contact there to get the whistle blown. And hearing the instructions from the back, stay compact. Cebu certainly have been keeping a tight shape here. Menzi looking to break the lines. Ball gets caught in his feet. Been having a rough start here, Audio Menzi. Normally a pretty calm character at the back here. That's what happens when it's a semi-final and you, you can get those nerves at the start of the game. And it's not easy when you're a defender and I mean, you're kind of playing with like a false high rotation sometimes. You're the ones taking the ball forward. And of course, you know that if you make a mistake, you can just open up and all of a sudden you can't get back and behind the ball. So, yeah, it's not easy to be this patient. That's a great run, though, from Armita. Try to take on one too many players. A sign of life in the Kaya midfield as Fuji has drifted all the way over to the left side. And what a tackle that is from Ferrer. Yellow card as well. No hesitation from Mick John Pineda there. Tackle was high from the right winger. Second player in the book. Let's take a look at it here. Fuji. Oof. Yellow card worthy, Darren? I think so. I mean, he's uh, he's done well. He's dropped his shoulder, just rolled it through his legs. And I mean, we say at this level, if you're going to push it through someone's legs, you're going to expect them to, you know, to react in some sort of way. But yeah, I mean, Cebu are keeping themselves in the game. They are being competitive. And of course, you'll learn. I mean, the same way that you know, it's a hard lesson to learn. But if you get sent off early in the game against a team like Kaya, it's a tough lesson to learn. So a couple of people gone into the books early will have to be on their best behavior. Six Kaya players to deal with. Daiso's delivery. Bouncing around inside the box. Bedik lifting that one and Villanueva comes out to collect. Looking to play it quickly as well. Looking for Miyagi. Whistle is blown. Arnella Mita, the culprit. And it's a yellow card as well for Arnella Mita. He's saying he had his, he tried to keep the contact to a minimum. Make John Pineda unconvinced. Coach Yu Hoshide upset, arguing that there weren't any prior infractions from uh, the midfielder, but in the context of a breakaway, it was enough. Perhaps one of the softer yellow cards that we've had this game. But I think the referee is just really just trying to stamp his authority, just trying to make sure that the game is, uh, is staying just about the football. But you've got to remember, it's a semi-final. I mean, everyone's going to be out there competing. Yeah, players will get booked. I would not like to see a player get sent off. Um, it would really change the dynamics of the game. But the players know that. I mean, it's really, it's been 20 minutes. Neither team has settled. It's got a little bit scrappy at times. Uh, and a lot of it is because of these stoppages in play because of, you know, the big tackles. Saldivar's delivery. Casas. Secure hands from the goalkeeper. But it must have been in the dressing room talk for Kaya. They would have been told, don't get sucked in. You know, don't, don't drop to that sort of style of football. Uh, because, I mean, a lot of the boys in Cebu will be used to it. You know, keeping it physical, keeping it tight, playing right on the edge. 
And Kaya now just need to do what they're doing, getting on the ball, just popping it in and out, keep pulling Cebu around and slowly just wear them down. Crossfield pass from Mitchell. Looking for Daniels. Had some success with those passes in the previous two matches, but so far Cebu have been quick to close it down. Menzi switching it over to Simone Rota. Menzi. It's almost as if they've looked at the back three of Kaya and been like, OK, we're not getting it from Mitchell, we're not getting it from Rota. And it looks as if every time Menzi gets the ball, uh, Miyagi's just on the half, just looking to press him. Sendra, he's got some great range in his passing. F spots Ferrer. The broker showing good strength there. Kaya getting it going once more. Still haven't found their groove here. Amita bundled over. That's Kursame is called for the foul. Let's take a look at it here. Able to get some acceleration. I think that's a little bit of a uh, bit of payback for what happened earlier. But again, Kyra are a very experienced side and you don't want to give away too many set pieces. I mean, even from an area like this where they can set it up, they work on things like this in training. I mean, size for size, they can go maybe two, three men deep. But after that, Kaya probably have the physical advantage from set pieces. Deep delivery from Daiso. It's pulled back as Miyagi hit the pitch. And collided with Kinshiro Daniels, it seemed. It's well past the halfway point of this opening period. Still scoreless. Neither side able to really create any clear-cut opportunities just yet. Villanueva sending it straight back to the opposition here. Rota. Could have cushioned that into the path of Daniels, but instead it finds Sendra. Now the break is on. Tassi. Ball just out of play. It's got a certain energy to it this game. Where you, it's really on the edge. I mean, both teams are still just trying to find and settle into the rhythm which they had in the group phases. But of course, you have to earn the right to play football. And sometimes you've just got to roll your sleeves up and put the work in. Fuji finds his countryman Omura. It's just a little bit sloppy here from Kaya. Both teams, of course, coming from an extra three days of rest. And perhaps that factoring in a little bit. Roberto Corsame on the floor here after colliding with Masanari Omura. Let's take a look at it here. Rota losing it. Just putting a stop to that run. 
And the free kick here for Cebu now. It's in decent territory. Center backs have stayed back here for Cebu, however. Except for Wako Kainas, he has made the trip. Fuji. Launching it forward for Kaya. And that's good defending from Rosquillo, who is marking his fellow player from Brotac Nuevo, Joven Bedik. Same doing well. Gets it to Miyagi. So is this the match that you were expecting, Darren, as we hit the half hour mark? Well, Cebu have been surprising in the way that they've come out in terms of energy. I think they've brought a lot of energy, and that's really stopping Kaya from getting into their, their flow. And it's interesting that Kaya still haven't been able to just put their foot on the ball, just be a little bit more calm and collected. They did it against ADT when ADT were playing at arguably a slightly higher tempo than what Cebu were playing at. I mean, Cebu are playing at a high tempo in terms of their pressing, in terms of, you know, being competitive. But ADT were pushing the ball much quicker than Cebu. And, and in that situation, Mitchell just really said, you know what, slow it down, let's be patient. But of course, that was a group game. It was, and it was the first game of the group. And now here, the result is really, really important. And of course, there's been I mean, a couple of touches which haven't been perfect for Kyra as well. All these little things sometimes can just add up. Finding Bidik more and more though, Kaya and Amita. As that sent back to him, Horikoshi. Forced backwards, Kaya. Menzi. It's Amita. Adventured offside. First touch had let him down anyway. The smallest man on the pitch. Finding a bit of room in behind. Let's take a look at it here. The two Tamaraos linking up. Tough angle to see the offside infringement. Mitchell, towering header from the big man, but he fell awkwardly, and he's in some significant pain here. Initially, it looked like his head has, had banged off the ground, but it was his lower back that he was clutching. Definitely put his head through that ball. Not the player you want to see in pain if you're from the Kaya staff. Such an important piece to this back line. Carlisle Mitchell from Trinidad and Tobago. Seems to be okay. Fuji. Switch a play to Horikoshi. Left footed shot. Nowhere near the target. I think at times the forward line of Kyra just a little bit high. Um, no one's really showing in that hole and just making a link between the midfield and the strikers. Maybe a little bit more energy or maybe the fact that they're being marked. So every time they're stepping into the hole, they're being followed in. Uh, but whatever happens, there needs to be a couple of players up there that are just working better together. Someone starts to show, someone pulls space for someone else maybe. Because at the moment, Cebu are able to contain Kaya, and Kaya haven't been contained yet in this competition. 
Lovely work here from Cebu, working it from left to right. Good intention from Rosquillo. Looking for the reverse ball, but King Miyagi was in a different wavelength. Rota firing that one into Bidik. Fuji. Bidik now asking a bit much of Dylan De Broeker here. And in that build up, Bedik's showing, but there's no one showing indirectly off him. So when he does pull into that little hole, he's got no one to set the ball off to. In other games, I didn't really see that as an issue. I mean, I thought they had those little combinations in the higher areas already sorted. Interesting call here. Seems as if it was a straightforward throw for Kaya, but Mick John saying that the ball had gone out earlier. So Cebu under pressure here in their own half. Sandra running into danger. And Sandra really having a go at Rosquillo there. That's what we said at the start of the game. That's really what Sandra brings. He brings that command and he's demanding of the players around him. Every now and then demanding of the referee as well, but I mean, that's all part of the game. He's actually having a good game in the middle with his teammates around him. He's been linking, keeping Kaya asking questions. But still not really had a clean cut chance, have we, from either side, Jing? So it's still anybody's game. De Broeker got his head to that one, and Bedik could spin away here. Kanya's coming to close out the space and he's done enough there Ferrer passing it into trouble Bidik linking up with Massa De Broeker Daniels out wide looking for room out to De Broeker Plenty of numbers up for Kaya. Ball is into the box, and that's sails over everybody. Kaya did well there in their high rotation, just able to get at the ball twice and put a, ball, a good cross into the box. But great defending by Kanya there. I mean, he's on a yellow card. The player's already running across him. He's done excellent to put a tackle in. What an opportunity for Kaya to get a sniff at goal. And so far, still holding firm. Both sides are. Just under 10 remaining in this opening period. So far, it's been a showcase of defensive solidity, more so than attacking flair. Good ball over the top there for Daniels. He's looking for the corner kick, but he gets the ball back. You know what I like about you know our new generation of football fans is everyone watching at home, we can appreciate a nil-nil. I mean, this is not a nil-nil because it's boring. It's not a nil-nil because of lack of you know trying or lack of attempts. It's just a nil-nil because the teams are equally matched tactically at the moment. Kanyas clutching his ankle. Seems as if he had gotten to the ball ahead of Daniels. And as a result, Daniels got him. Fuji firing that ball in. And it's a 50-50, that one. Wako Kanyas, he's been involved in Quite a few wars with Kaya over the years. Of course, he used to play for the Loyola Morocco Sparks. Huge rivals with Kaya. And 
Miyagi challenging well there against Rota. Saldivar needing to go backwards. Amita. The broker. It's one and one here with Rosquillo. Tries to burn him for pace, and there's three red shirts quickly around him. De Broeker. A bit of a mess there inside the box for Cebu. Player down. As it seemed as if the goalkeeper and his center back collided. First time we really had the back line of Cebu scrambling here. Let's take a look at it. And how well has De Bruyke done there just to react and snap that cross into the box. Oof, that was nasty. I say something about the Cebu players, they're tough. They get up from that tackle. It was a collision with his goalkeeper. Kanyas able to clear the danger. Mitchell taking a touch there. Danger in the back for Kaya. Has been few and far between, especially over the last 10 minutes. We're starting to have more and more of the ball here, but Still unable to solve the riddle that is Cebu. Yeah, the centre mids have reduced the number of touches they're taking. That's helping Kaya keep the ball moving, like we saw them do in the first couple of games. And we're seeing Rio move away from his starting role at the right wing back position. He's drifted in more centrally and over to the left flank even. Not finding much joy there on the right flank. The men in yellow. Who'd be happier between the two sides? Darren? I think at the moment, Sabu would go in at half-time the happier. Uh, Kaya will still be happy that it's nil-nil, and they know that they can play you know, to a, to a higher standard than this. That could be a high foot. A little bit of danger here for Cebu, but it's Ferrer racing away. Rio Fuji gonna be ending up in the book. It's the second one for Kaya. He joined Arnel Amita for the men in yellow. Meanwhile, Ferrer on the receiving end of that one is also a player who's in the referee's book. Let's take a look at it here. Ferrer in danger of running into all kinds of space and Fuji rather professionally bringing him down. Yeah, that definitely goes down as a professional foul. So we were looking to counter as quickly as they could through Ferrer on the right-hand side. Casas out to collect. They dropped it. They're able to navigate the pressure with no problems. Cebu, credit to them, very quick in the transition, quick to plug the holes when they arise. It's just incredible how deep Cebu are dropping now. They're already on their 18-yard box. So all Kaya need to do is just make sure they study the pitch, try to find the areas that they can work the ball in. At the moment, out wide, they've been trying their luck. That's a big one for the confidence of the young defender, Rosquillo. One of the standouts of the Palerón Pambansa program.
Rata dealing with the danger there. Daniels now looking for some support. Switch to play. Fuji finding Daniels. That pass not on target. Daiso Horikoshi, the intended target. Sabu have just got those two banks of four. They're just so deep. Kai were building the play up there, trying to keep it fast, trying to switch, trying to pull them around. But still, there was the eight Sabu players just all very, very tight, very compact. It's normally a sign of, you know, a, a team that's gone out with a more defensive mindset. But on the counter-attack, Sabu do look handy, but they just can't get the numbers up. Lovely touch there from Ferrer to get the ball under control. And now here's a ball inside the box. Chance here for Cebu. Headed away by Mitchell. Cebu now starting to get their tails up here as we enter added time of the first half. We're only going to have two. Warning shot fired by Cebu, but here's a chance for Jovan Bedik. Villanueva out very quickly there. Villanueva, a bit of pain here. Made contact with Daiso Horikoshi, but there was no malice involved. In fact, looked like he took a bit of contact from behind that pushed him into the goalkeeper. Let's have a look at it. Simone Rota just lifting it into the box and uh, fantastic goalkeeping by Villain Weber. It's a great save. Brave. Great goalkeeping from Ace Villain Weber. No hesitation off his line. Dove right at the danger there. And we're into the second minute of added time. And there's only going to be two minutes. Collision there between two former Tamaraos, Ferrer and Odi Menzi. Both of them feeling the effects of that. Let's have a look. Oof. Menzi saying he tried to pull out of the challenge. Play continues now. Final 30 seconds. Still, the connection's not there for Kaya. It's almost one of those cases where the idea's there, Jing, but they're just not being able to produce it when they need to. There it is. Mick John Pineda with a halftime whistle. Scoreless at the break. As the upstarts, Dynamic Irv Cebu holding firm against Kaya FC Iloilo. We've already seen extra time today. Will we see it again for this matchup? Well, we're going to find out with another 45 minutes to play after this 15-minute break. And so far, frustration for Kaya FC Iloilo and resilience from Dynamic Herb Cebu as we take a look at some of the highlights of that opening period. Really no clear-cut chances, Darren, which is rather astonishing in this game. Yeah, it's really been about Kaya building up, trying to pick their passes through, and then Cebu just waiting and hitting Kaya on the counter-attack. Similar to the other semi-final that we saw, but Cebu have just had that aggression about them, that, that want and that desire to get the ball forwards quickly. And Kaya just need to stay patient because I'm sure that opportunities will come. There's be some great defending, Jing, from both sides, really. Very, very well contested semi final. It's delicately poised. And you can expect some explosiveness in the second half. And we hope you could join us for that. We're taking a short break and we'll catch you when the action resumes in 15 minutes. Don't go anywhere.
It's been a tightly contested affair here after 45 minutes. Kaya FC, Luilo, nil. Dynamic Herb, Cebu FC, nil. After 45 minutes, Darren, it's been a very difficult game to, to find out who's got the edge. Well, in terms of possession, we know who's got the edge, and that's Kaya FC, who have been you know, able to hold the ball a lot more than Cebu. But it just has been one of those games where it's been a lot of hard tackles going in Sabu are doing their job they're stopping Kaya from playing they know that Kaya went into this game as the favorites and there's not been very many shots Jing so it's a still everything to play for it's going to be so difficult to call I could not tell you at the moment who's going to go on and win this game Kaya FC Ilo, of course um, known for a fluid style of play in the group stages they breezed past their opposition and now they've hit a wall here in Cebu which you must say is is quite impressive from the side of coach Bing Bing Kulina. I think if you were to look at heat maps in this game, you would just see when Kaya have the ball, what Cebu are doing. And Cebu are just dropping deep. They're getting compact and just making it difficult for Kaya. So tactically, Cebu have come into this game really well prepared. But Kaya do have the personnel to make those adjustments. So I think the start of the second half is going to be vital. Speaking of adjustments, you see there Arnel Amita wishing his teammates the best of luck. He picked up a booking in that opening period and now he's making way for Marvin Angeles who will check in closer to the whistle. If you're coach Bing Bing Kulina, I presume you'd like to see more of the same but if you're coach Yuhoshide, what do you want to see here, Darren? Well, I always see that when a meet is off the pitch and you bring on a player like Angeles, it's going to really be about you know, range of passing. So bringing on a player like that kind of opens up the game because he can switch the ball better than Amita. So Perhaps some tactical adjustments, maybe just try to stretch the game a little bit. But what's going to be important for Kaya is whether or not they can play in and out of their top men like they did in the first two games. Jing. That's been missing. Uh, Sabu, tactically, what changes do they need to make? Just need to create a goal-scoring opportunity. That just needs to be their first main target. Can we get a shot on target? Can we test Michael Cassas? And can we test the Kaya back three? So far, two players to look out for in Cebu, Waco Cañas and Nicolas Ferrer, both with the booking and both in positions where they are engaged in a lot of tackling in this match. Meanwhile, Arnella Mita has been withdrawn. The only other player with the booking is Rio Fuji. All to play for here in the next 45 minutes. If nothing separates the two sides, we head into extra time and still if both sides are unseparated after the additional 30 minutes, we will go to penalties. We must get a winner. It is a knockout match. And the winner will get the opportunity to face off against the Ascals development team in the final in three days time. And of course, with Kair FC also holding that AFC license, there's so much to play for here. Going into that final would mean that they would get the nomination ahead of other teams for the AFC. And of course, for qualification rights to battle it out for the Champions League. So here we go. Both sides on the pitch. Final words from both sides. Cebu looking for an inspired second period. Kai FC Uli Ilo looking to rediscover their form that got them through the group stage. Jing Hamlang and Darren Hartman calling the action for you. And here we go, we're off. Substitution for Kaya FC Iloilo. Player number Not a great 17, start Arnel for Amiga, Kaya as Ori Menzi heads that one out for a corner kick. He's looking to cushion that into the path of Michael Casas. In the end, he's put his side under pressure very early on in this second half. Yeah, it's not the situation you want to be in. Start the second half. Opportunity to get a fresh start to the game. Ferrer's delivery. Sendra wide open. And Casas with a crucial stop. Mm. 
best chance of the game. Well, we have seen some fantastic heroics from goalkeepers in this semi-final already from the previous game. That's a top draw save there from Michael Casas. Not the tallest of goalkeepers, but makes up for it with agility and reactions. It's a point-blank header almost. And able to just tip it high and wide of the bar and the post. From the opposite flank now, Ferrer, it's another good delivery. Contested right in front of Casas. And finally, Kaya able to get the ball out of danger. Angeles pings that over to Horikoshi. He's one on one with Cordova. Skips past. Took the contact. No whistle. Mick John Pineda in a great spot. Masanari Omura winning that one. He's looking for the early ball. Gadia cuts it out. Already a very eventful start to this second half. Well, early drama. The fantastic save from Casas, A handball appeal. And then all of a sudden the ball's down the other end. And Jason Cordova, who has not been booked yet on his best behavior tonight, arguably could have been booked. In the end, no whistle at all from Mick John Pineda. That's a tackle that the Kaya fans would love to see again. But already more pace, more purpose from both sides. Neither team would really want this to go into extra time. I mean, it's a real leveller, considering that you know, clubs have not been as active as they would like to be because of COVID and, I mean, following the strict regulations from the Games and Amusement Board, the IATF, everyone working together to create a safe environment. It's difficult to say that you're match fit, let alone having to play 120 minutes. It would be a real leveller for a team like Kaya. Uh, Sabu, if you don't know, I've got a really good setup got a home pitch somewhere they can train day in and day out but even still with the preparation of Kaya and the excellent preparation of Cebu he can't prepare you for 120 minutes of football Daniel Gade are doing very well to close down any player with the ball Jovan Bidik now just finding it difficult to find the spaces I don't think Cass, uh, Kanyas and Cordova leave much space to move into, to be honest with you. Sendra being hounded here by Fuji. Ricky Sendra starting to find his groove here in this match. Marvin Angeles, newly introduced. Omura. Trying to stretch Cebu here. Fuji. You see how many red shirts get back. Very few spaces for Kaya to work with. Yeah, but that was better from Kaya there, Jing. They were you know, a little bit more flow to what they were doing. Good combination, switching the ball from right to left, and they still have the ball here. Angeles, we're going to skip past his band there, ran into Cordova. A quick look at Coach Yu Hoshide, who's going to be watching the next 10 15 minutes or so with a very close eye. Be wondering if he'll need to introduce more inspiration off the bench. Gadia having a word here with the official and Dylan De Broeker, who was the party that was aggrieved. A quick look at Oliver Colina. He's got to be enjoying this from the sideline. 
Kaya have been unable to make their free kicks count. They've had a few of these in similar sort of territory. And so far they've been unable to find the main target who is Carlisle Mitchell. He's already scored from a set piece. Daizu Horikoshi waiting for the whistle. It's good delivery. Headed away. Angeles looking to lift that one into the danger zone. Nothing doing. Let's have a look at it one more time. Horikoshi's delivery fell nicely for Angeles. He was just trying to find somebody to attack it. Everybody caught on their heels. I think a few players there were expecting just to crack the shot off. The Dick keeps it in play. They're going to switch it. It's behind it. Angeles. But Daiso Horikoshi is there. Good tackle from Baristasi. Jing, I think Kaya look better when Daiso's on the right-hand side. Kind of have like a nice balance to them. I think the players trust his movement as well. His timing's excellent off the ball. Rota unable to find Horikoshi. Another crack at it here from the sideline. Daniel shows. Angeles gets it to Omura. Passing just a little bit crisper now from Kaya. Bedik bundled off. Playing it short this time. Simone venturing forward only to find Wako Cañas. He's been a real rock at the back. Now almost 55 minutes into the game. Cebu are unable to squeeze their lines up when they're clearing their lines which really is going to put Kai on the front foot. Angeles. Venturing in behind, well covered. Simone as well is also able to get higher, get on the ball in a much more advanced position, which is just giving the extra option for Kaya. Now that Cebu are playing so deep, their outlets a little bit harder to find. A much better opening 10 minutes here in this half for Kaya. Yes, they recovered from that uh, giveaway corner at the start of the second half which was almost converted. And now they're starting to take control of the game, similar to what we saw in the first two games they played in the group phases. Well read there by Saldivar. Both the referee and the assistant had a good look at it. It's just going to be a goal kick. One more. Look at this exchange. Officials saying not enough, or actually a foul on Daiso. Saldivar, no spark plug for the Cebu side. Did fantastic in their opener against Stallion, and has continued 
to bring that good form into this game. Daniels cushions it to Angeles, who loses out to Ricky Sendra. Space for Gadia. Well spread to Rosquillo. Now it's Ferrer. Can he get a good cross in? Yes, he does. And what a chance for Cebu. Mitchell heading it out of danger. I didn't even need to look who that was there heading it. It was Mitchell. He's been just so consistent for Kaya this cup. Great work for Sambu to get the ball out wide. And it's a good ball into the box as well. But of course, there he is, the experienced Mitchell, just heading the ball out. And now Kaya have to deal with another corner. Sambu almost scored from this position. Now Mick John Pineda needing to sort out few of the personnel inside the box. Sendra trying to find a bit of room. Be no surprise if he's the target once again. Good ball from Ferrer. It's Mitchell once more who rises the highest. Ferrer skips past De Broeker. Another good cross. That one beyond Sandra. And Kaya again relying on Mitchell just to step up and command at the back. And I think both Mitchell and Rota have actually stepped up their game, leading by example with their experience. Ferrer has been finding some joy on that right side for Cebu. Yeah, I think he's got into, uh, into Menzi's head just a little bit. But of course, you've got the cover of Mitchell there to deal with any of those crosses. But if he could get his head up and start looking for little reverse passes, just cutting the ball back to the edge of the box, and Kai could find themselves in trouble on the break. No real... Shots to stop for Villanueva, but he's been cool, calm, collected when collecting high balls. Daniels being hounded by Cañas. The second defender arriving very quickly. Former Ferrer. The broker switching it. That's beyond Daniels. Yeah, at times it's not quite working for Kai, but what I respect about them is they really are a team. They're sticking to their playing philosophy. They're not getting frustrated with one another, even though sometimes the passes are a little bit over hit or a little bit under hit. And they're just trying to grind it out and they're trying to do it together as a team. Really, really fascinating to watch. Got that plenty of room. One thing is for sure is who have done their homework. And Coach Bing Bing Colina have his, has his side set up very, very nicely here. Horikoshi. Shimmying to get past Tasi. Couldn't find Omura. Rota now joining the attack. Omura. Looking to touch it past Saldivar. Oof. That's the first attempt here for Kaya. Second period. Can Shira Daniels firing that one off target? Well, you take that. It's all about mindset when you get on the ball and Kaya need to get possession and they need to create. And that time, yes, it's a half chance, but it's still an opportunity. They need to keep a very close look on that time. Only 30 minutes left in this game. 
And the main statistic so far is no shots on target for Kaya. That's going to be a painful one to swallow. Cebu have already had their opportunity. Needed the quick reactions of Louis Michael Casas. There's some movement on the bench for Kaya. Looks like Shermar Filonko getting ready to enter the fray. Mitchell. Looking for Angeles. Well read by Ferrer. Horikoshi had it poked away. And that's a strong challenge. And a clean one from Miyagi. Ball being sent out there. As Daiza Horikoshi in need of a bit of treatment. Oof. Took some contact there from King Miyagi. That ball will be with Cebu. We'll see here if they give it back, and they do. Fair play being observed here by Dynamic Herb. Substitution perhaps can be made. Now Kaya will wait one more passage of play. It's going to be a defensive substitution for Kaya. And Ori Menzi about to give way for Shermar Felonko. Not a surprise for you, Darren? No, not really. Never really settled into the game. Uh, I thought he did much better in his first two outings, but just perhaps the pace uh, of the counter-attack, especially on that side for Eric, has been very, very lively. Uh, and maybe you know, the players know each other from the past and maybe not able to get that out of his head when he was playing, or perhaps the occasion. But of course, it's not easy to change someone in your back three. It can sometimes really change the dynamics of the way that the three are playing. Angeles is under a lot of pressure there. There's going to be a bit of a shuffle here for the men in yellow as Shermar Filonko has occupied the left wing back position. Masanari Omura dropping into the back three and Dylan De Broeker taking Masa's spot in the middle. We'll see how this reshuffling of the pack pans out here for Kaya. Well, we know that Massa has got bags of experience playing at the back. I think he, did he play a season or two at centre-back? Not too many years ago. First touch for Shermar Filonko is a high boot. The referee has given him a bit of leeway and kept the card in the pocket. Let's have a look at it here. Definitely a bit late there on the challenge. Do Ilongo's clashing. That hairstyle, Shemar Filonko could be part of Cebu. Yeah, I think so. And straight away after that challenge, just saying to the referee, ref, that was my first one. <laughs> but of course, at this level, you don't want to be the player who gives the ball away. I mean, that's what training transition is all about and I mean the player who gives it away automatically becomes the first defender so you've got to make sure you get the ball back it looks to be a serious one here for Jaime Rosquillo you'd hate for him to 
be forced to come off. He's been playing fantastically well. Came on as a substitute in the outing against Stallion. Didn't really get a chance to showcase his ability. But the 2019 Palarong Pambansa MVP has held his own here against this Ilo Ilo side. Coach Bing Bing Colina looking quite anxiously onto the pitch. Wants to avoid a reshuffle if possible. Saldivar can play on the right flank. They still do have Dabao on the bench. So they do have options. You can see there, Rosquillo still needing a bit of treatment. Koshi. Miyagi dropping into the center circle. The broker didn't find much joy on the left flank. Perhaps he'll find more in the center of the pitch for Kaya. And so far, connection with Shermar Filonko not panning out yet. Yeah, and that's a shame because in that passage of play, of course, to build down a man. So Kaya really should have been you know, a bit more patient, just looking to find the areas where that extra man could be, create that overload, try to take advantage of it. Still down to 10 men, Cebu here. And yeah, starting to struggle to clear their lines as well. Cordova finding the humor in the mistake. And Kaya unable to take advantage. Been a frustrating evening for Kenshiro Daniels. Kanyas unable to find a teammate. The Dick gets it to Daniels. It's been a similar trend. They're overhit pass there. And what Cebu really need at the moment is just something just to spark them. Let's try to get their tempo up at the moment. They're having a hard time getting the ball into Kaya's half. A little bit of a drop in energy in the press. If Kaya could just find the quality that they had in the last couple of games, they could definitely get themselves a goal. And ball from Saldivar. And player with cramps here, it's Ricky Sendra. Not the man you want to go down if you're Cebu. Not a player you can easily replace with his creativity and his quality in the middle of the pitch. Seems to be all right. A few tight legs on the pitch at the moment. Koshi. Saldivar with a clean challenge. Daizo has stayed down. And he hasn't come out on the positive end of many of these clashes with Saldivar. That's one of those tackles where you either go into the book or you're an absolute hero. He did look as if he took the ball quite cleanly. It is clumsy. He does have his studs up a little bit. But perhaps the referee just saying that was because of his momentum, possibly. When you come flying in like that, you got to get 
the ball. At least close enough. It's not always about getting the ball, it's how you take the ball as well. I mean, the rules are there. Uh, and it's the referee's job to interpret them and the scenario. And I think in that case, it was just momentum, really. Both players were really moving quickly. And there he is. Ricky Sendra just being very demanding, demanding high standards from the players around him. I mean, as a senior player, I think you have every right to do that. It's a semi-final. You need someone in there talking, trying to get the best out of you. The dick dropping very deep now for Kaya, trying to get involved in the play. De Broeker. Onigoshi finding a bit of room. Cuts outside, gets a shot away. And Villanueva gets that safely into his hands. Player down here for Cebu. Looks like it's Tassi who is cramped up. Yeah, that time Kaya playing with a much better intensity on the ball, but just couldn't find that quality when it fell to De Broeke. And those guys are just doing all the hard work, just trying to carve something out himself. Villanueva has had a good game here for Cebu. And Kaya there setting a good standard in fair play, just returning the ball back to Cebu. Kurosame using his pace well. Tassi, first touch was just a bit strong, but what an opportunity that was for Cebu. With a better first touch. Had an opportunity to fire one off there. Not easy to do though, that ball was really punched in. I mean, the winger was moving as quick as he could and if he found a softer touch there, perhaps would have tested Michael Casas again. But Kaya emerged with the ball with enough opportunity to build up. Just starting to creep to that 15 minute mark. 15 minutes left in this game. Just over. Still anyone's game, Jing. The previous matchup between Stallion and ADT needed the extra periods to decide the winner. The way things are going. Not outside the realm of possibility. Yeah, and in that game, it was the counter-attack team that potentially had a couple of chances that they didn't convert. And then the team that was playing with possession come out on top. Will it be the same story here? Or will Cebu write a little bit of football history themselves? Of course, with this style of play that Cebu are playing, doesn't come without a few cons in terms of energy levels. They are doing a lot more running than Kaya. But most importantly, they're keeping them out. Fuji. So difficult to find any room. Angeles. Daniels. That's out for a corner kick. Might be the first one for Kaya. They haven't had many opportunities from corner kicks. And now Jaime Rosquillo back on the floor. And here's that opportunity for Tassi. It's under a bit of pressure from Daiso. And I believe that's the first time really that Cebu have picked a pass, or well, any team has picked a pass, in between the back three of Kaya. Came from the enterprising running of Roberto Corsame. Real live wire for Cebu up top. Just an opportunity here for a lot of the players to stretch out as well. Cramps, a real f factor to deal with. 
Mosquito up on his own. Needing to dig deep here, the young man. Daizo Horikoshi's corner. Coming up. It's a low one from Horikoshi. Mitchell let it run. And now it's Miyagi. Fuji taking a safe approach. Just sending that one out. Daizo in a state of discomfort after that corner kick. And Rosquillo down on the pitch once more. Doesn't look like he can continue. It's cramps once more. And there is a stirring on the bench of Cebu. Looks like it might be a pair of substitutions here for Dynamic Herb. I think there'll be a few minutes of added time as well at the end of this half. Been a lot of players struggling with match fitness, cramps. As to be expected, it's been very contested. Very, very contested. It's been a spectacle for people out there who enjoy the tactical side of football. Kaya yet to unpick Sabu's tight two rows of four. Although there have been chances, there's been set pieces. This game's pretty much had everything apart from a goal at the moment. And I mean, it's difficult to say. I'm coming up to the 80th minute, we've not really had a clear opportunity at goal. And it could come down to one moment. Just one moment could put you into the final. So here come the substitutions for Cebu. Jaime Rosquillo unable to continue. He'll be replaced by a veteran in Rafi Llorente. Cebu FC. And King Miyagi's Here's night is done as well as he gets King replaced by Yagi Lorenzo Genko. Lorenzo Genko. Player number 14. Quite interesting Jaime here. Rosquillo Two players with some player roots with Kaya. Lorente played Rupi with Llorente. the club for quite some time back in the day. And of course, Lorenzo Genko, a product of the academy. Both sides will be looking to stamp their mark here with... 12 minutes left in regulation and potentially extra time on the horizon. Mitchell winning that header. King Miyagi had quite the shift up top for Cebu and that's a great cross from Horikoshi spilled by Villanueva. Just about dealt with at the back by Lorente. What a first contribution for the substitute. But that's what Kai need to do. They need to win this game by being the professional, by being the, the team that's played at a higher level. It's a fantastic ball into the box. Caught everyone off guard. Rota's ball. Uncleared. Filonko gets a step on his defender. And Cañas gets that out of danger. Horikoshi snapshot. Daniel's effort wide. A bit more of worry in the back line here for Cebu. They've been forced into a lot of defending inside their own box now. Ten minutes to go. Kaya starting to carve open a few more opportunities, starting to make things happen the way that they want to happen. But have they left it too late? Filonko winning that battle, but he's going to get carded here for his challenge on Lorente. But he asked for one, and he got booked on his second. 
Well, not a lot of people know this, Jing, but I've actually played against this Cebu side in a final in extra time. Uh, it was a few years ago. Uh, teammates were actually with Chiefy. Chiefy got sent off. If Chiefy's uh, listening, he's in Canada. He's settled there. He's doing a great job coaching as well. Uh, and we lost that game. They're very, very good in extra time. Uh, they have very competitive games in Cebu. And the boys' mentality when it comes to digging in deep is incredible. Actually, the last game that I played competitively after that, I said, you know what, I'm too old for this. <laughs> so they officially retired me. One of those games, huh? One of those games. Two players getting entangled there. And Kurosame will have the whistle go against him. As he was tussling with Masanari Omura. Another player saying it's his first one. Ball to chase here for Rota. Saldivar doing well once more. Gadia. Looks like he might have controlled that one with his arm, but got away with it. Daniels looking to thread the needle. Well spotted. This is the card that I'm used to seeing now. Starting to pop the ball, people showing for each other, people talking better. Completely in control of the tempo at the moment. Cebu being forced very deep into their half. Every single player behind the ball. In the first half, it was just two rows of four. Now they've got, at times, all 10 outfield players behind the ball. Felonko. Unable to connect with Bidik. Attack breaks down for Kaya. They're playing short to Lorente. And Casas off his line. They're going to play quickly, Kaya. There's motion on the bench for Cebu. Kind of look to just keep things fresh. Kaya starting to pull the field around now. Fuji. Omura getting into a very advanced position for a center back. He stayed up as well. Filonko's delivery finds Horikoshi. The whistle is blown. What's it? What's been given here, Darren? It looks as if the referee may have given a handball. Could be a penalty. Oh, wow. Drama. With six minutes remaining, Mick Jan Pineda signaling for a penalty. Let's have a look at it here. Filonko's cross. Horikoshi's control. He lifts it. And it's touched Tassi. Was it on the arm? Was it on the chest? There certainly wasn't much of a protest from Tassi. And it's, he's coming off as well to be substituted. It might be a better angle here. Oh, off the arm, Darren. Yeah, that all comes down to the shape of his body. Uh, it's in a, his arms extended. It is ball to hand, but still, because his arm is extended, the referee has every right to declare that as, you know, an infraction of the law. So he's got to give a penalty. Wow. It's harsh. Clever play just to lift it. And now this is a moment. I'm sure that Kaya would not want to score their goal in the semi-final in this fashion, but they take it if it goes in. A tough blow for Cebu, who have done incredibly well to keep this scoreless so late into the game. The final contribution of the Cebu captain, Baristasi, a handball. He's been substituted now. Ace Villanueva wearing the captain's armband, and it's going to be Kaya's skipper, Joven Bidik, 
who has the opportunity to put Kaya in front. Joven Bedic buries it for Kaya. A massive goal. And right now, that goal, the difference. Cool, calm, collected from the captain. Sent Villanueva the wrong way. And now Cebu have four minutes plus added time to find an equalizer. Goal for Kaya FC Iloilo. Number seven, Joven Beric. Well, Beric's been quiet. The captain's been quiet, but when they ask for him to step up and just tuck the ball in the back of the net under a huge amount of pressure, he's done it. He's put Kaya in control of this semi-final with minutes on the clock. And with the experience that they have behind them, you would definitely favour Kaya at the moment. But Cebu, we know Cebu. They've only been playing in Copa for their second game, but we know that they are not going to throw the towel down easy. Will that be the goal that sends Kaya through to the final? Cebu certainly hope not. And they are pressing here to try to find an equalizer. As it stands, it will be a Group B reunion in the final between ADT and Kaya. Quick feed, just about able to keep it in possession. Ganyas has stayed up here for Cebu. You see their intention, they want to go long. They are looking for Kanyas. Fuji able to clear. Filonko winning the ball. The Dick smartly winning the whistle there. Just put his body in the way. He's clutching. His hamstring. Movement on both benches. Steven Pataling Hug has checked in. Joven Bedek here. Getting a little break. It looks like John Ray Melgo. Getting set to check in as well for Cebu. And quite surprisingly, it looks like it's Ricky Sendra who's going to make way. Substitutions for Dynamic Herb. So here we go. One last minute of regulation, but Darren, we're expecting quite a bit of added time here. I'd expect at least four or five minutes of added time here. Kai needs to get hold of the ball. Just try to play the way that they want to play. Keep the tempo with them. Keep the momentum with them after that converted penalty. And of course, Sabu have just got to combine and try to get the ball forwards and make something happen. One clear opportunity is all Sabu need to get themselves back in this game. And they have the ball. Four minutes to be added on. Right now... Joven Bedek, the hero. Scored two goals Bidic against Mendiola. Four minutes. Now he scored the crucial goal here. The solitary goal of the match so far. Filonko on the overlap, wins a corner kick. And Kaya unsurprisingly going to take their time here. Here comes the substitution. Kenny's night is done. He's going to be replaced by Eric Giganto.
Eric Giganto has had very limited minutes for Kaya in this competition. He's come on to see this game out. Some fresh legs. Perhaps just to ensure that Cebu aren't able to break away with anything surprising. Nobody inside the box here. For Kaya, they're going to play short and they're going to play inside the corner. Cebu winning the free kick. And Cebu looking to play quickly. The Dick trying to have a conversation with the official. And Cebu, of course, looking to get the play underway very quickly. Ferrer. And that's a strong challenge from Nicolas Ferrer. He's already been in the book. Daiso, some significant pain here. Players now having tempers tested. Gadia unsurprisingly involved. Simone Rota doing his best to try to separate the parties. Tell you what though, when that happens and someone like Jason Cordova comes over, you know who the tough guys are. As soon as he steps in, people just stepped away from all of that. This is where it all started from. Oof, it's just a, a late, clumsy tackle. And I think some of the Kaya players were just appealing, saying, look, how many? He's already been booked. Surely he's got to be walking already. Both teams will still have one game to play. Of course, the losing side will play in the third place battle. So both sets of players with the incentive not to get sent off and suspended for the next match. Melgo. It's cut out. Less than 30 seconds remaining. Who would have thought we'd see this scenario, Darren? Kaya holding on against Cebu. Well, it just goes to show the quality of Cebu setup. Uh, this is not a, you know, a new team. It, it's something which has been growing over the years, something which has developed into a team which is capable of competing, or showing they compete at this level. Only going down 1-0 to Stallions only going down 1-0 to Kaya, but still fighting in this game to try to salvage something and force extra time. This could be their last play. Gadia spreads it to Saldivar. Can they find something here? They've got numbers forward. Rota. Giganto unable to clear. And that's going to go wide. Danger averted for Kaya. As the substitute pulled the trigger from distance. Whistle already in the hand of Mitch John Pineda. Casas going to send this one long. And there it is. Final whistle blown. Players of Cebu hit the pitch in disgust. They put in the effort. They put in the hard work to make it very deep into this match, scoreless. But in the end, Joven Bidik's goal, the difference as Kaya FC Iloilo book their spot into a third Copa Paulino Alcantara final. Yeah, well, Cebu were living the fairy tale up until that moment where they conceded that penalty. There could have been a story today of Cebu knocking out on paper, and I think on performance, the favorite so far in this Copa Alcantara Cup, but it's not to be. Kaya managed to, well, 
fight their way through, scrap their way through, just keep plugging at Sabu. Sabu put up a great fight, Jing, but Kaya emerge as the victors. 1-0. What a game of football again. Kaya able to breeze through the group stages. This certainly was not an easy matchup for them. Cebu made them work hard. And as you can see, they Ladies weren't far away from being the ones to open the scoring themselves. Yeah, the, when the second but half started, Cebu came out nice and bright, Cebu forced FC a couple of errors from Nil. Kaya. But just as the game went on, Kaya slowly, slowly got their rhythm back. Yeah, there were a lot of challenges. Website. A lot of them producing set pieces that neither side were really capable of capitalizing. But of course, Kaya just kept on going, kept on going and managed to salvage something from this game. Wasn't the prettiest to watch, but there was a lot to play for. So you can understand that and hear the deciding moment. Thank you and good night. Joven Bedik sealing Kaya's spot into the final. Last time they were in the final two. They lost out to Cedis Negros. They're looking to regain the title they got in 2018. They will be facing off against the Azkals development team in three days' time. And we look forward to seeing you all on the 19th of November. It gets kicked off at 4 p.m. with Stallion Laguna taking on Dynamic Herb Cebu for the third place spot. Then, of course, we've got the championship match. Azkals development team taking on Kaya FC Iloilo. It's a rematch for both matches, and it's going to be an intriguing affair all the way through. And we look forward to seeing you all on November 19th. For my partner, Darren Hartman, my name is Jing Hamlang. Thank you all for watching. Good night.
Kaya is a very tough team. Uh, we have chance also. Yeah, beginning of second half, we have from set pieces headers. Uh, it's a it's a great save with uh, Michael Casas, but uh, their goal is just like breaks up the game also. Uh, this young team uh, composed of young players also and mix mix uh, some veterans, but uh, uh, we're playing well. Uh, defensively today, tonight, uh, the, the plan is to, to make the count transition attack, but uh, uh, Kaya also defend well. Yeah, uh, this game uh, give us a break also on on, uh, on the next game, and uh, uh, hopefully we can try to win that uh, match battle for third. Uh, still, for us, it's very important. Every game is very important as for here. Thank you. Coach, just uh, talk us through your 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 thoughts on uh, after this match, very hard fought win for Kaya. Yeah, it was a really tough game. I, I really respect the Cebu FC. Um, you gotta go through Joven, but how how difficult was it for you to break down Cebu today? Yeah, especially when we, we wanted to really possession, but they are really blocked. So players didn't know how to break this block. It was a really organized team. Uh, talk about your team as well. Uh, their, their performance, even though they, uh, it seems a bit frustrating at times that they cannot break down Cebu, but uh, what does it say about your team? Yeah, we, we really needed the patient, especially we expected First half we score, but of course football is not easy, so just patient. That's key for us to, today. Uh, Coach, now you face uh, ADT in the final, um, a repeat of uh, your, your group stage match. And uh, did you watch uh, ADT's match uh, earlier today? Yeah, only first half I watched. Yeah, but yeah, again, uh, what are your thoughts on that matchup against uh, ADT? Of course, again, it, it will be really, really difficult game, but we want to, we want to win. All right, thank you, coach. Thank you. Very difficult game against Cebu. Uh, was that uh, what you expected? And gano uh, kahirap yung panalo Yes, of course. Every uh, semifinals, uh, napakahirap. Siyempre, uh, gusto din nilang manalo. For sure. Uh, yun nga, uh, napakahirap na ibit yung uh, depensa nila. And uh, medyo nag-park uh, the bus yung sila sa first half. And, uh, pero uh, at the end of the day, uh, nakuha pa rin. So, uh, siguro uh, mag-prepare pa kami uh, next uh, two days para sa finals. Yung, yung naro kanina, na-frustrate ba kayo na hindi pa rin kayo makalusot up until you know, 80, 82, 85 minutes? Uh, tumapasok na ba sa utak niyo yung extra time kanina? Yes, uh, first half, uh, nung 0-0, uh, napafrustrate kami syempre. Uh, hindi namin uh, medyo inakala na super uh, defensive sila ngayon. Uh, but, uh, Yun nga, uh, nakuha pa rin namin yung goal namin na uh, uh, makapasok sa finals. Uh, then, uh, big respect sa Cebu, syempre. Uh, magaling yung team nila. Yun nga, no? sinabi mo na nga, no? 
ano pang makikita mo nakita mo sa Cebu na you know kung papasok na sila sa PFL ano pa nakita mo maganda sa laro Yes uh, siguro yung uh, yung offensive pa nila mas develop siguro uh, but uh, most of the players kilala naman natin um uh, A very hard team to beat yung uh, Cebu. Uh, siguro uh, more pa games and uh, siguro uh, mas mag-prepare sila sa next season. Then kami din. Uh, now, uh, nasa final kayo. Um, score ka na sa final. Uh, kalaban nyo, parang baguhan na rin. No? Uh, ADP, um, uh, fresh na mga players. Anong, anong tumatakbo sa isip mo pagkalaban mo sila? Yes, uh, first game namin sila. Uh, Nabit namin but... Siyempre, finals yun. For sure, uh, hindi sila mag-give up. Uh, yun nga, next two days, kailangan pa rin namin mag-prepare. Kasi napaka-importante para sa amin yung Copa na to. Uh, personally, kamusta yung form mo? Um, maganda yung last uh, two, yeah, last three games mo actually. Uh, ngayon, nakascore ka na naman. Uh, anong, kamusta yung confiance mo? Kamusta yung form mo? Siguro, uh, uh, yung pagbibigay sa akin ng coach na uh, tiwala sa sa team and also the management yun siguro yung uh, pinakamalaking bagay at saka yun din gusto ko ring uh, ibalik sa kanila yung trophy this season thank you thank you